Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay. Uh, I am Christina Heliotti, as Mr. Kuros just mentioned. I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist at Mental Hospital Liraku Clinic. It's in the north of Athens. And today I will be talking about the psychological aspects in the management of a chronic health condition. So when we talk about chronic health conditions, uh, what we mean is cardiovascular disease, neuropsychiatric conditions, cancer, digestive, respiratory, sense organ, musculoskeletal diseases, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and there are many, many rare conditions, one of which is spina bifida. These are the most common chronic health conditions. More specifically, there is, a, there is a huge impact, of course, on physical well-being when someone has a cardiovascular disease. And the mental and emotional to toll is huge as uh, one is when one is diagnosed with a cardiovascular disease, um, all of a sudden, their idea of their self is changed, so their self-identity identity is shifted. Also, they must make lots of changes in their everyday life. And this, of course, has a huge cost for their psychological well-being. One of three people diagnosed with a cardiovascular disease probably will develop a level of depression. Multiple sclerosis, another common chronic health condition. One of two patients with multiple sclerosis are prevalent to depression. Usually the chief pain is, the chief complaint is chronic pain, which of course affects their everyday life, psychologically, socially, physically, lots of changes in their life. And constant changes because uh, there are very changes in their health from week to week, day to day. And of course, here as well, we have symptoms of depression and anxiety. Uh, one of four deaths in, the, in Europe are attributed to cancer. And of course, when there is a diagnosis of uh, cancer, this at first is very shocking most of the times for the patient. Uh, they usually have to start some sort of uh, drastic therapy, which of course brings lots of changes in their everyday life. And of course there's a huge shift in their concept of uh, identity. A rare condition, spina bifida, People with spina bifida many times have low self-esteem as self-esteem today is connected to achievements and appearance, which means that usually their confidence is at a low level and they feel isolated. So the goal is to help them of psychotherapy accept themselves for who they are with their limitations. Now, when someone is diagnosed with a chronic health condition, uh, there will be, usually, there will be feelings of uh, guilt, self-pity many times, and it's important to acknowledge that there is a huge emotional cost when someone uh, realizes that they have a chronic health condition. So, because of this uh, huge change in their concept of their self, their self-concept, there is usually a sense, a huge sense of loss. So although in our everyday lives we might consider a loss, uh, the death of a person, uh, the loss of a job, there are other very important losses such as the loss of my previous self, my healthy self, or the loss of my healthy life. So when someone is diagnosed with a chronic health condition, or when a parent all of a sudden finds out from the pediatrician 
that their baby has a chronic health condition such as spina bifida, this is a huge loss for them. Um, in this case, it's a huge loss because of their um, uh, expectations. Their expectations are suddenly changed. They thought they would have a healthy baby, a uh, normal life, quote, and all of a sudden they lose this concept, this expectation of how their family would progress to be. So this means uh, that they might go into the grief process. One of the first reactions to um, the diagnosis is anxiety, which is a normal reaction when you don't know what is to come, when you don't know what to expect, what's going to happen from now on in your life. And one of the basic, most basic first stages of the grief process is denial. So it's when um, you cannot believe that this is the situation. This is when you go into denial. You think, no, this is not happening. And this is actually a defense mechanism and it's a protective buffer that will give you the time you need to be ready to absorb this information. Okay. Now another uh, stage of the grief process is anger. Why is this happening to me? What did I do? Why, why is God punishing me? Did I deserve this? And that's where lots of, lots of anger will come out uh, when a person is diagnosed with a chronic health condition. This anger usually stems from an inner fear. So in most cases, uh, the reason that someone is so angry is because deep down they are very, very afraid, very scared. What will happen from now on? What will my life be like from now on? This anger is sometimes turned inwards. So uh, you might blame yourself. I wasn't careful enough. I didn't predict the things that I should have predicted. But also, it can be turned outwards. So you might become very angry with uh, easy targets, who of course are the people in your family, the members of your family. And this has another role also, apart from hiding your sensitivity, your vulnerability, anger works in another way. If I hurt you first, then you won't be able to hurt me. And also, as many times we see that someone, a patient with a chronic health condition, uh, tries maybe subconsciously to attract attention with their anger. So if they notice that when they get angry, everyone all of a sudden pays attention to them, then this uh, is a reason for them to be angry, maybe all the time. But also, it's a way to feel that you, you still can influence your environment. You still have control over your environment. So for the patients with a chronic health condition, it's very important to self-monitor and try to detect where this anger is coming from, what the root of this anger is. Why am I so angry? Usually, a very helpful question in this case is, what does it mean to me that I am diagnosed with this chronic health condition? What does it mean for me? Maybe the answer is that um, my life is not valuable anymore, which is a very harsh thought. And uh, this can lead to fear, but the external um, mo emotion expressed will be anger many times. So if you're not in contact with, with what you're thinking deep down and what you're feeling inside, uh, it's very hard to control your anger, to manage your anger. In order to be able to manage your anger, you need to know where it's coming from, which fear is underneath. And that's when you'll be able to uh, manage your anger with a result. Of course, we have other techniques such as breathing, um, distraction and good use of time out but these are all um, techniques that 
are, are not enough in order to see where exactly this anger is coming from and how to deal with it. So also it's very important to talk about this anger with the people around you. Explain to them what triggers your anger, what your fears underneath are so that they can understand you. And when they know that your anger is coming from this fear, it will be much easier for them to work with you around this difficulty, this difficult emotion. And also, they will not uh, personalize your anger. They will understand that it doesn't have to do with them, but it's a more complicated issue. Now, another basic stage of the grief process is depression. Of course, when someone goes through the phase of depression, after a diagnosis of chronic condition, they have feeling of feelings of sadness, hopelessness, guilt. They lose interest in anything, everything that used to give them pleasure. And of course, decreased energy. Also have difficulty concentrating, problems with sleeping, appetite, maybe even thoughts of death or suicide. Unfortunately, maybe even suicide attempts. And of course, there's irritability, get angry, they get angry very often with uh, trivial things. Now the final stage of the grief process is acceptance. So hopefully after you've been through the previous stages, not all people go through all stages in this order. So there are some people who go through some of the stages in a different order, maybe they'll go through all of them. But the final stage, hopefully, will be acceptance, which means to let go of your self-concept as you used to be, your previous self, to let go of that, to let go of your previous expectations, and to accept the current status of your health and its limitations. So it means accepting and liking who you are here and now with your illness and its limitations and the changes it will bring to your life and your future. So when we have a diagnosis of a chronic health condition, not only is the patient affected immensely emotionally and psychologically, but their family is also affected. Um, for the family also, this is a huge shift in their life. Many changes. Uh, especially in the Greek family, usually the, the main caretakers are members of the family. So this can have a huge toll on members of the family of the patient also. This means that the members of the family might also go through the grief process. Denial, no, this cannot be happening to our family. It must be something else. I don't believe it. Anger, why is God doing this to us? They might go through depression. It's very scary when all of a sudden you find out that a loved one has a chronic health condition. Numbness, I don't feel anything. And hopelessness, we're done. What are we going to do from now on? Our lives are destroyed. Maybe even thoughts of this sort. And unfortunately, even suicidal ideation. Moving on to coping. First of all, it's very important, as mentioned earlier, to explore your fears around this diagnosis. What does it mean to you? So where is this fear coming from? You will definitely need to adjust your expectations and set appropriate goals, realistic goals. It's very important for the patient to take responsibility of their health and the progress of their health. 
and to be able to take care of themselves. Also very important, if recommended by the doctors, is exercise. Psychotherapy can play a very important part, especially cognitive behavioral psychotherapy. So with a therapist, what you can do is explore how you are processing this information of a new diagnosis of a chronic health condition. Again, what does it mean to you? Which other angle is there to perceive what's going on? Maybe a healthier angle. It's very important to learn as much as you can about your condition. This will give you a sense of more control over the condition. What's going to happen with your health, with your life. It's also immensely important to express your feelings. You're allowed to be afraid or angry uh, or stressed. And unfortunately, when you hide your feelings, they accumulate. And this makes it even harder to manage these difficult feelings. You can talk about these feelings with someone you trust or write them down in a journal. Other forms of exp expression are arts, sports. It's very important to take care of yourself when you're diagnosed with a chronic health condition. So do something every day that you enjoy. Another important aspect of uh, better quality of life is cultivating appreciation, cultivating forgiveness. So recent studies, uh, especially in the States, have shown that people who have these aspects uh, at a higher level have better quality of life. They can move on, they can let go and not allow toxic feelings, for example, anger, um, make an influence on their quality of life. Now, a very important aspect of uh, chronic conditions is change. So when you have a chronic health condition, your health might be changing every day, every week, and you need to adapt. So one of the biggest challenges is to always be revisiting your own expectations. Today I'm, I'm able to do A, B, and C. Tomorrow maybe I won't be able to do these things. And you need to be able to adapt to this. So symptoms can improve, they can deteriorate, deteriorate, which means you need to adjust again. And this can be very tiring for the patient and the family. You might think that an improvement won't be stressful, but even an improvement in health can be stressful because the patient and maybe the member's family are thinking, okay, how long is this going to last? How long will I be able to do this for? How long, uh, more, how long, for how long more will I feel well? What will happen afterwards? So this can be very stressful as well. It's very important to focus on what you can still do. Try to focus on what you can control. And something you can control is expression of emotions. And it's very important to feel that you're allowed, that it's accepted to be angry or anxious or sad. Sometimes there's great pressure on patients with a chronic health condition to always be happy and dynamic and fighting and uh, optimistic. So this can have a huge psychological burden on this patient. It's very important for them to know that it's okay and uh, it's accepted to be sad or angry sometimes or many times. And when you feel that you are allowed to express emotions, this gives you a better sense of control 
over what's going on in your emotions. Now, it's uh, emphasized many times when you're diagnosed with a chronic health condition that, the condition that you need to have a fighting spirit. For example, uh, I won't change anything in my life. I won't make any changes. I'll have the same goals. I'll do the same things as before. And I'll be fighting and I'll be dynamic and so on. Now, this is very helpful. But if it's not uh, rooted in re reality, it can be harmful at the same time. So having a fighting spirit doesn't mean abandoning your goals overall, but it might be changing them, um, readjusting them. It might mean separating your goals into smaller goals. It might mean changing the path that will lead you to achieving your goal. And if, if there is a patient with a fighting spirit that will not readjust their goals, this might lead to hopelessness. So when they actually discover that they can't do the things that they used to do or they can't achieve the goals that they had set at first before the diagnosis, this might lead uh, to hopelessness. So a fighting spirit is great, but it needs to be rooted in realistic goals. And it's very important to remember that changing sense of purpose or direction in life, it doesn't make life worth any less, it just makes it different. And many people with a chronic health condition have discovered that because of their chronic health condition, they, they evolved in ways that they would have never imagined to evolve before this diagnosis. A very important part in coping and management of a chronic health condition is support. Many times people with a chronic health condition might feel isolated. No one understands me, no one knows what I'm going through. Uh, everyone's saying, oh, it's nothing, you'll get over it, don't worry. You'll be okay. So their thought is, no one knows what I'm going through. They don't understand me. And they feel very isolated. Or maybe they're trying to say, you know what, I feel really bad today. I'm really sad. I'm really angry. Oh, you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be angry. No, be happy. So this, this leads the person to just close up, isolate themselves, not talk. No one understands me. And it's very hard for these people, very hard for the patient. So we need to, to give space to these, quote, unpleasant emotions that we're usually afraid of. And many times when you have a person with a chronic health condition across you, you might feel uneasy or a bit worried. What am I supposed to say? I don't know what to say. I'll just avoid the topic overall. So this leads to further isolation of the people with a chronic health condition. And also, sometimes it's very tiring for the pro pro person with the chronic health condition to have to talk about this all the time. Just repeating again and again and again, I have this, you know, it means that and that. So this can be very tiring and that's why they just avoid contact overall, which leads on to isolation once more. So it's very important for the person with a chronic health condition to know that they can open up, that there are people who will allow them to express these difficult feelings, unpleasant feelings, that will at least listen and reflect and say, you know what, you're right, this is really scary. Or, you know, you're right, you have a right to be sad, this is sad. And I, I, I'm sorry for this, I feel sorry for this. Um, it's also very important to um, remember that if you have a chronic health condition, you should allow others to help you. Maybe you would prefer it if you could help them, but it's very important to let other people help you as well. For them, this is very important. It's a gift you can offer them.
So, as mentioned before, even for the family, it's very hard to cope when there is a diagnosis of a chronic health condition. It's very important to let them know what's going on also, to give them the information and let them know what to expect also. It's also very important to talk about issues such as roles, childcare, and other things that need to be sorted out. It's better to talk about these issues rather than to just worry about them on your own. So to conclude, when there is a diagnosis of a chronic health condition, things are quite difficult and coping is difficult, but it's much less painful when you have support and guidance. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? No? Okay, thank you very much.